Hi. I am Jenny and welcome to FreeJu, the global community of educators. Let me show you why as an educator you should make FreeJu an important part of your teaching and learning practice. A community of teaching practice is important for any educator. On FreeJu you will be able to access CollabEd, which is like LinkedIn but for educators. Here you will be able to connect and network with other educators from all around the world. You can build your own community of teaching practice and or join one of the many other existing groups and learn and share ideas, lesson plans, etc. with each other. Then, for a more formalized approach to professional development, you can go to SkillEd, which is like Netflix for educators. Here, you will be able to access a wide range of courses designed by global experts that will help you to learn about new pedagogical, technical, and soft skills, all related to 21st century education and the future of work. There are more than 20 courses available for free and for more advanced level courses, you can upgrade to the Silver Membership Plan for just 20 US dollars per year and get access to all courses designed by Acadasia. The courses are available in English and in several other Asian languages. And what's more you will receive a free verifiable and tamper-proof digital certificate for each course that you complete. If you have upgraded your membership to the Silver, Gold, or Platinum plans, you also get access to DesignEd, which is like Canva for educators. Here you will find the easiest and fastest way to practice your own instructional design skills and build your own courses. We have pre-integrated several third-party edtech apps like Flipgrid, Canva, Mentimeter, Padlet, H5P, Zoom, etc. right into FreeJu so you can make your courses engaging and fun for your own learners. As you can see, there is a lot you can do on FreeJu as an educator. So what are you waiting for? Go to www.freeju.com and get your very own free lifetime membership today. See you soon on FreeJu. Hello, hello, kamusta? Welcome uh, to all our friends uh, from all over the world. As you know, Akad Asia is a global community of educators. We are now serving over 160,000 educators from all of, from up to 35 countries. And uh, I am Roy Platon, co-founder uh, of Akad Asia, based out of here in Manila. Hello and uh, good afternoon uh, to all of you. And for those, for the rest of you in the other parts of the world, good morning, good evening, good day to all of you. Uh, it's such a delight and super excited to be with all of you again this afternoon, uh, the, today. So uh, we have a very interesting topic today. Um, uh, our friends, our chief academic officer, Kirsten and Jake, uh, will join us uh, probably on the next sessions. But for today, I'll be your host. I'll be your moderator. I know some of you, matagal na tayong hindi nagkikita. Maybe you still remember me. I remember all of you, hopefully. And uh, here, a very interesting topic this afternoon, okay? So part of our own... Um, educator upskilling okay as teachers we also need to professionally develop ourselves uh, one very important aspect of this is also being self-aware okay it's a very important uh, uh, topic because if we are self-aware of our own strengths our own weaknesses about who we are that makes us also more effective as educators and teachers and we can also impart these skills to our students as you know they are all also on their own journey of self-discovery okay so there's one saying i think i heard before which is saying you know the purpose of education i think i heard this from a ted talk the purpose of education is to transform an empty mind into an open mind okay ibig sabihin po nun, if we have young learners maybe they're starting in kindergarten and uh up to early early school um they're very curious, very inquisitive about the world around them. But then they also need more knowledge and experience. And then as they move on in years in middle school or high school up to tertiary college and beyond, they, those are the formative years when they become more self-aware of who they are, what their contribution can be to a better society. And our role as educators in that sense is very important because we are molding the future. We are shaping how these young le young leaders, young learners will be. Uh, and it's important that we ourselves as teachers are also very much self-aware. So we've invited our speaker today, uh, and he's uh, 
one of the experts on this, and uh, we're glad that he's joining us. Um, his name is Mr. Joseph Alvin Pena. Just call him Alvin. He has been an educator for over 17 years, and he's worked as a reading therapist for about three years, a guidance counselor for about 12 years, and also as a tutor in, uh, for about seven years. Okay, so he's been around and really has had a lot of experience on this self-awareness topic. Apart from this, he is also a counselor and a volunteer for the Archdiocese of Pasig City here in the Philippines, uh, helping people with uh, drug addiction in poor communities in Pasig, Pateros, and Taguig, various uh, communities and municipalities in the Philippines. In his spare time, he enjoys writing poetry, doing digital art, and podcasting. Okay, so very interesting. Uh, and he's here to share with us some insights about uh, self-awareness. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome to the stage uh, Mr. Alvin Pena. Alvin. Hi, sir. Uh, good afternoon, guys. I'm so happy to be able to join uh, you guys for this afternoon. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Alvin. Uh, Salama. Thank you for joining us today. So very interesting topic that we have uh, about self-awareness. Okay, so I'm sure... A lot of our uh, audiences are, in, are asking, you know, not just for themselves as uh, teachers learning about how and what it means to become more self-aware, but even probably how they can uh, help their own students also gain this very important skill. And, you know, it varies over time as they're very young. Maybe they're very um, uh, open to new ideas, maybe still uh very excited about uh things in the world and but as we go old get older you know things happen life happens you know various challenges among this the pandemic and what have you and um how how we kind of bounce back and how we're able to adjust even despite the various challenges that are presented to us uh, you know by life and uh, things that happen not just in school but even in our family life our home life our relationships and how we also progress in our career. So really multifaceted uh, lives we live and how we become more self-aware about all those aspects of our lives. And you know? so yeah. um, later, I guess for the sake of the audience, we just have some guide questions for Alvin uh, to kind of discuss and run through. In the meantime, if you guys have questions that you'd like to ask at any time, um, our team here in Acadasia will be flashing the link to Mentimeter on the screen, so here and in the chat. So as always, please visit the Mentimeter link and post any of your questions about the topic there. And later towards the end of the session, uh, we will be uh, taking questions uh, from you and, uh, of course, sharing it with our speaker today, uh, Mr. Alvin, so that he can actually respond to those. So we'll have uh, some audience participation later in our program, okay, for today. Again, this is a fireside chat. We're just going to be telling stories and sharing with all of you. Uh, our discussion today okay so just post your questions using the mentimeter link that will be shown in the chat okay so uh Alvin, yeah um so i guess i'll just uh run through some of the questions here just to kind of you know mm -hmm. uh prime us and uh, move us along so yeah. obviously the first question is what is <laughs> what is self-awareness and what does it mean to you in terms of and you know why why should we care about self-awareness in the first place i see okay personally self-awareness to me is um it's uh an individual's consciousness with this inner world with the, the interaction or the connection actually of what is in the inner world and what is the outer world and uh i know it sounds highfalutin but what does uh, one's, what, does, what is one's inner world and what is one's out, outer world. Uh, maybe uh, I could give some examples to illustrate the how these two affect each other. So let's say, for example, um, so most of us are educators. Uh, and here in the Philippines, for most of us, we would have to commute or to drive to work. Um, let's say, for example, you get stuck in traffic. So the traffic is what's happening in your outer world. And what you are feeling and what you are thinking is what's in the inner world. Uh, being stuck in traffic, are you feeling worried? Um, is it something that makes you angry? Uh, ah, this, happen this happens every day. I mean, I can't believe I'm stuck in traffic again. I'm, I left 10 minutes earlier, 15 minutes earlier. Or do you take it as 
a few minutes of calm before the storm uh the calm before the storm ayon um say for example you have a principal or a headmaster who assigns you an important leadership post for a committee an important committee do you take it as a challenge do you feel happy that oh uh this is uh this is something that i deserve this is something i worked for or do you see it as uh something that gives you fear or gives you uh uh some sort of imposter syndrome so what's happening outside in the world around us affects us mentally and physically even and uh being self-aware means that you are aware you, you know what's happening around you and you know its effect on you on your thoughts on your emotion and on your actions so uh personally that's how i see self-awareness very interesting so it's like um i like what you're saying about the inner world the things that you know are going on in our own mind and uh, the things about uh, things that we feel or or think about inside us and of course how that also relates to the outer world right meaning uh, whether it's the relationships we have or the environment that we have uh, all those things so that's very interesting okay um our next question uh let me just uh, pull it up all right so it is said that self-awareness uh, comprises multiple components okay so there's the self concept the concept of who we are and what we are uh, our own thoughts uh, yes. mental uh, cognitive the feelings that we feel okay so you know so emotions and what have you and of course our body our own physical body and what our body is feeling so in these aspects um what do you think about these components and are there any challenges in terms of developing all of these things so the self our mental capacity thoughts our feelings and our body with emotions right so what do you think these components are or if there are other components we're missing and what is the most challenging to develop among these different components i guess um with regards to that question the challenge really is that you know all of those things that you mentioned uh mentioned roy uh the self-concept the thought the emotions the body and even behavior uh for that matter they're so intertwined interconnected that um the state of one actually affects the state of the other so um siguro, uh, a concrete example of this is that if you're sick if you do go to work and you're feeling uh under the weather or uh let's say you have a slight fever that would definitely affect your thoughts for the day by your less less positive less optimistic um your mood might be a little bit uh sullen uh and then you might not be as active in terms of behavior man you're not so active or you don't um act or do things as you do um in counseling, we have this, uh, for the counselors who are with us today, I'm very sure you, you're aware of this. There's this thing uh, we call cognitive behavior therapy. And it's personally, as a counselor, it's one of the uh, my most useful tools in the arsenal. Na parang what that uh, thought, uh, the, what that uh, theory is saying is that yun nga, uh, the mind, the, the, thought, the thoughts, the emotions, uh, bodily sensation and behavior are so interconnected that they barrel down towards one direction. So if one is bad, the others are uh, barreling towards that direction also. And um, siguro the challenge uh, in terms of, you know, inculcating self-awareness in our students and in, uh, in our students is that um, you have to be able to affect one of those four things. And affecting that would actually turn the direction of the others towards that direct uh towards a more favorable uh direction so for example if a person is undergoing depression or is uh undergoing a difficult time you could influence their emotions uh how they feel things or how they see things and that would uh ultimately affect um uh, what they feel in their body and uh their behavior then what they do so um siguro later i'll have uh, if uh in the course of our questions, I can share some techniques that we could use also, um, you know, in uh, keeping us in uh, ourselves in check, uh, especially we are still in a difficult time. So uh, we're hopefully, hopefully stepping out of the pandemic all already. But um, 
I think it would be fair to say that uh, this uh, life event has affected all of us significantly. And um, yeah, this these few things that I'm going to share with you uh, helped me get through the, uh, the, the more difficult times. And uh, I was able to use it also to help my students. So ayun, again, going back to the question, which is the most challenging, um, I think being interconnected, all of them are challenging. And the challenge really is, um, you know, uh, being able to influence one because the others, the other aspects affect that one facet that you're trying to influence. There. Okay, thanks a lot, Alvin. Very interesting, you know, how it's all interconnected and how it affects one affects the other. So I guess depending on, I guess for some people, I would say what's more natural to them, right? Mm. So some people are naturally very intellectual and can process yes. very sophisticated concepts. Others are more emotional. They express yeah. themselves through art or uh, through performance, through dance and they feel a lot of things. And others are very physical, right? They like sports. They like running. They like uh, fitness. And, yeah. and those are all aspects of ourselves and how, and how, as you said, one can affect the other. If we're sick, then we feel down and, um, and it's all interconnected. So very nice insight there. Uh, I just then. have to agree with what you said. Na, I know, it, it depends on what, what the person is drawn to. Because I remember I have this one student who is a student athlete. Uh, he's mm. I, I think he was at grade two at that time and he was really upset. I just uh parang yon, he he has difficulty expressing his anger and he's not aware mm. that uh that his means of expressing anger is kind of destructive. And I told him, you know what? So, okay, go to the gym, run it off, and then come back here in 15 minutes. And then after that, that's the time that we were able to talk. So yon, um, since I rec we recognize uh, he's more on the physical side, it is something that we were able to use. In affecting his emotions and his thoughts also, so I, I know, uh, uh, I just had to uh, agree with what you said earlier. Na, yeah, yeah, that's great. And also, I'd like to kind of have a short shout out to our friends from all over. So uh, we have our friends from Indonesia. I saw in the chat, Terima Kasi, our friends from Indonesia, and of course our friends from Thailand, Kabungka, Kabungka. I hope I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> uh, nice to see all our friends also from Thailand uh, joining us today. Okay, so uh, I will uh, go on to the next set of questions. Okay, so some say, uh, Alvin, some say that the primary benefits of self-awareness is that it gives us power to influence outcomes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the benefits of being self-aware is it gives us power to mm -hmm. influence outcomes. Do you agree with this idea? Or why or why not? I totally agree with that. Um, and sometimes the outcomes are not overt. Sometimes it's not concrete. But self-awareness do uh, do influence outcomes. For the more overt and concrete examples, you know, if you are aware of, let's say, for example, your skill level of uh, what you know and what you can do, if you have that self-awareness, then you don't over-volunteer, right? Or you don't um, short uh, sell yourself also. So, you're able to tell yourself and other people, this is what I'm able to do and this is what I'm able to deliver. So uh, your your ideas, what you know and what you can do is maximized by that. Um, there are also some outcomes that are not overt or are not, uh, not observable, that, that are not yeah. obvious. And uh, self-awareness does play a huge part in that. Siguro, I'm thinking of um, a more historical um, example. Uh, and what I thought of uh, are two people, Nelson Mandela and uh, Victor Frankl. They were, uh, of course, incarcerated for such a long time. But if you would read their autobiography, their level of self-awareness is so high. It's so, uh, it's so sharp that despite of being in that situation where you are literally sitting in a dark room for like years on end, it didn't drive them crazy. They, they still found meaning and they still found insight in their current situation. And of course, they, that did not last forever. They didn't die in, in captivity. Uh, they were able to come out of it and they were able to share the insight, uh, 
the awareness that they had during that time. And that is something that is not so overt at the time, di ba? When, when they were at, in jail and when they were being persecuted. And yet, uh, I believe self-awareness played a huge part in that. So I totally agree that uh, self-awareness, having, having self-awareness does play a huge part in influencing the outcome. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a great example, uh, Alvin, because, you know, the the situation, although it's not really exactly being in jail or being incarcerated, mm-hmm. but let's say Viktor Frankl during the Nazi uh, Holocaust yeah. period, and of course, Nelson Mandela during the apartheid in South Africa, right? Yes. But you, you feel trapped. You feel yes. like... Uh, you cannot do anything because you're only in this cell. And similarly, during the pandemic, I think a lot yeah. of us felt yeah. something like that, right? It, it, although we were not in jail, it felt like we had to stay in our homes and, and yeah. in, in this small room, and that's it. And we couldn't go outside, especially when lockdowns were much more, uh, more enforced. And now, I guess we feel very lucky that slowly, mm-hmm. at least for some uh, countries and some uh, areas that are a little bit that the cases are now going down and are less uh, less prevalent. We're actually enjoying a bit more about going out. But you know how how would let's say even teachers or students how would they kind of uh, consider the situation and be self aware enough to say that this is not the end. <laughs> we are yeah. not confined to these spaces and we can still continue to teach, continue to learn despite that confinement. Yeah, you know what? Um, I uh, during this two year period that we were in the pandemic, I really uh, it, it gave me such huge pride that I, I'm a I'm an educator and uh, seeing the teachers, the educators around me, I realize how how creative everybody is. Uh, I I know of some teachers who who are teaching online who require their students and they themselves also do it. They wear costumes on a certain day. Parang they defined mm. of uh, injecting life into into the discussion and into into uh, the lessons. Uh, of course, because we're doing it online, like like uh, this webinar and um, that physical contact that we lose, uh, that we that the students are used to when we were uh, pre-pandemic is is such a huge loss, no? Not just uh, mm. it. Has, we we learn it. We learn a lot of things also, not just from the lesson, but what's in the lesson plan, but with the interaction that we have with our teachers, with our with our classmates, with the te- with the people around the school. And um, I'm so uh, impressed with how how creative, how inventive the teachers are. And uh, I'm not just referring to the fluff of it, uh, of wearing costumes or finding the best. Uh, online games or, or whatever uh gimmicks that they inject but even connecting to the students in an in 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 a personal level even if they're just facing uh a computer screen and they're still able to connect with them in a personal level amazing it's it's really amazing how how teachers are able to transcend and go beyond such hurdles yeah absolutely agree with you alvin and you know again kudos and cheers to all our teachers here in Nan. You know, you went the extra mile and took the extra effort to really connect with your students. Uh, You are really the heroes of this pandemic. So thank you very much for uh, all you've done being excellent teachers. Um, So let's 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 now try to discuss, let's say, about the students themselves. Right. So when can you say that a student has become more self-aware and what factors do you think? can help the student in their environment or Mm-mm. what do they need to initiate so that they they, be, they are aware of the need Mm-mm. of becoming self-aware? And maybe just as a follow-up point to that, how do you think a teacher can explain or help conceptualize mm-hmm. the, the idea of self-awareness to students? How do you think, what kind of techniques or things they can do to help students be, become more self-aware? Okay, it's okay. Um, for the per- first question, um, most of us, uh, most of us, even as adults, are unfortunately not uh, by default self-aware. Sometimes mm. it takes us a difficult situation, uh, a dire need, um, 
for us to be uh, aware to to most of us are on autopilot uh, autopilot really uh as we go on our daily work so everything is routine everything is um uh, we do things on a certain order and we uh it's very rare for people to you know pause and you know reflect and 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 try to see where i am where am i in my life what uh, where am i with my goals am i fulfilling my purpose there are some people who are able to do that but by default most of us um go through the tasks of the day and similarly we can expect this from our students also that it takes them um, you know having an emotional distress academic academic concerns for them to stop and you know do some uh, do reflection and and really touch on one self awareness um most of us will benefit from self awareness being modeled to them or being uh, in, uh being taught to them so i would uh encourage teachers uh siguro before we could uh encourage or we, we could teach them self awareness of course we are uh we must be self aware ourselves uh yon and then yes. towards the second question man there are actually while well, I was um, mulling over that question, what are the um, skills or qualities that one must have to develop self-awareness uh, with themselves and with their students? Uh, for the teachers, uh, so I'm, I know I'm, the framework is we're trying to develop a student self-awareness. And for a teacher to be able to do that, I think there are three things that they must have. Um, number one is openness. Um, openness. I'm sorry, so for the teachers pala, two. Uh, I was talking mm -hmm. to the students. There should be two. One is empathy. Uh, you have empathy. to be able to, yeah, you have to be able to look at your student situation. And one must say, uh, you have to uh, wear the shoes of the person and walk for a mile uh, with your shoes. But I think more than that, you should be able to put yourselves in the, uh, in your student's, uh, in your student's position and situation. And, uh, try to be able to think, to feel, and to act like that person. To gain understanding, to, to see that person through and through. Understand what he's thinking, what he's feeling, and why might he, why he might be acting in a certain way. Yeah, so and for example, just on that point, Alvin, if I can interject, it's like sure, sure. when the pandemic was starting, um, the issues had been, let's say, uh, internet connectivity, not being able to see my fellow students and classmates, and of course, submitting the assignments, ah, right? Yeah. So, so like before, um, some of the teachers who trained, these are some of the challenges that they had because basically they had to adjust. Um, how do you do recitations, and how 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 does the how is the student gonna set up their camera and what have you? And you know, so so understanding, and they discovered. That some of these students really, you know, had really very poor conditions at home, right? Exactly. They they did not have um, a, a quiet room so that they could set up their camera. They would probably use a mobile phone and they they probably try to listen to the lesson in out in the street. It's very exactly. noisy or and what have you. So so how 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 does how does that empathy skill help improve the instruction uh, of teachers? You know, having that awareness. Na, na, uh, knowing that some uh, some people would have that situation of trying to I've heard of stories of people yun, uh, learning from uh, using your their mobile device uh, a phone to learn uh, to, to, to connect to their class some of them would have to go go on their on their house's roof or climb a tree especially for those who are in the provinces it's having that understanding or knowing that um, that some some of our students have that situation a, a teacher would be able to um respond appropriately uh i think primarily uh knowing that this this kids would have difficulty probably turn in um assignments later or not have the level of mastery over the lesson that they would normally have uh before the pandemic uh it gives you that understanding it gives you that that um that heart that goes out for that particular student and you know um what the teacher will be doing uh in in light of that the student's challenges would really differ 
uh, from teacher to teacher and to uh, that particular student situation. But it uh, having, I think it's really important to have that empathy in the first place for the teach teachers to understand that you know um, we are on this. Uh, parang we are crossing the same river, but not all of us have the same kind of boat, di ba? Some maybe, yeah, probably some of, some of us don't have life jackets or um, saguan or like paddles to kind of move through the water. And, you know, yes, some yes, people yes. are not wearing yes. life vests. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Later on, um, I saw a question about activities that, uh, that could conduct self-awareness. I'll be sharing some activities okay. later on. Uh, but to finish uh, this first question, another mm. would be sensitivity. Um, sensitivity, be, okay. Uh, for people to have sensitivity, and that's very difficult. Huh? I have to say, uh, having sensitivity while you are conducting a lesson online, um, mm. sensitivity I think has two as facets. Number one, sensitivity over your reaction, the the teacher's reaction of of what you're going to say, your facial expression, of what uh, your your movement, your face, and your words are going to communicate to the students. Um, Using the proper terminology, what is politically correct? Yun. That's that sensitivity. But the other aspect of sensitivity is um, because most of our students are undergoing um, difficulties academically and so sometimes even emotional difficulty because of our situation. Um, most teachers would have would uh, have that conversation where you would ask the teacher, the student, "Hey, how are you? How are things going?" Um, for us counselors, there's always three things that we observe. What the person is saying, that the exact word that uh, a person is uttering, uh, the tone of the person's voice, uh, the the tone of of the the, the 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 tone of the voice that the person uses, and um, his facial expression and his body language. And these three might have to go together for you to be able to confidently say that what the person telling you is accurate so if i tell you if you ask me how are you how how are things oh i'm happy I, I, everything's going well and i say it that way more than I believe that i'm really happy but if i tell you yeah i'm happy everything is fine so that would make you think uh, you have a level of sensitivity you would say okay some uh, uh my student is going through something or uh, there's there's something underneath there that might be that not, needs to be probed or needs to be addressed so yeah I, so like I, so like just to kind of also clarify what you're saying so it's the words being spoken the manner and the tone of being said and yeah. the uh the, the the body expressions the nonverbal clues right of the, of the person so so you know he says He's saying he's happy, but he doesn't sound happy at all, right? So, so that might be a clue as to what the condition of the student is. Um, and even, I, I just came to mind, like, even ourselves as teachers and educators, sometimes we're having a bad day. And let's mm -hmm. say I have 40 kids in my Zoom class or in my mm -hmm. Google Meet class, and then some of them are not participating. They're not mm -hmm. turning on their cameras. I don't know what they're doing. And I yeah. get upset, right? Yes. So I get upset. It's like, I'm working so hard. I'm trying to teach you this lesson and you kids are not <laughs> are so ungrateful and you're not helping by not participating. So how? So then it affects the way I'm teaching, right? Because yeah. then I'm not focusing on the lesson. I'm getting mad. I'm getting upset. Yeah. So so what, is, what can a teacher do in situations like that where you know they're maybe it's the end of the day or they had a very bad week whatever how how can the teachers kind of catch themselves and be more self-aware you know what um it's hard <laughs> to to really do something especially if you are in the middle of a class it's you can't uh you can't really just you know step out of the room and say okay we're going to have a five minute break i just need to breathe uh of course again really do that. maybe they can maybe they can because it's virtual right it's virtual so they could yeah. say, okay, we'll take a short break, five, five minutes. Break. Yeah, yes. yeah, so turn off cameras and come back. But then when you come back, some of the students are late. They don't come back, right? So, so. That's, that's, that, that's the risk naman of doing that. But um, siguro, just to uh, segue and to slide into uh, Miss Batal's question also of some of the activities that we can do mm. to promote self-awareness. There's this um, one activity that... Uh, 
that is very easy. You actually need just three to five minutes to be able to do it. Uh, and mm. you can do this uh, to uh, to improve your, your mood or to improve your your bodily state. Or this is something you could prompt and ask your class or one student to do uh, to more or less uh, reset their mood or reset their, their focus and their attention. And it's something okay. very good. Uh, relaxed breathing, some breathing exercises. So breathing exercises, okay. Yeah. Um, so let's again, try it. <laughs> I'll try it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to uh, demo it with you guys. And though I cannot see you guys, uh, this is something that's very easy. So you could just follow uh, what uh, I will be doing, what Saroy would be doing. Um, but before, uh, but before we do the exercise, let me preface that with by saying that you know what's going on in our minds affects our body. And our bodies affect our mind. So uh, this is one of the exercises that affects your body that hopefully would influence your state of mind and your emotion. So mm. one breathing exercise is very, very easy. It's called box breathing. Um, it's called box, box breathing. Box breathing. Okay. Box breathing. Yeah. So basically, uh, you can do this with 10 to 20 intervals. All you have to do is to inhale, uh, four counts inhale. And then you will have to hold it, uh, and then four counts exhale, and then hold it. Uh, the hold is also four counts. So inhale for four counts, mm -hmm. hold for four counts, exhale for four counts, and then hold again for four, ca four counts. And then you do it again. Uh, second interval, inhale, hold, exhale, hold. So let's do it together. Okay, yeah, let's try it. Let's try it. Okay. What you should be thinking, or what you could be thinking while you're doing this, is that you are inhaling peace inhaling uh that feeling of relaxation and then exhaling whatever stress that yeah, is in exhaling your stress and exhaling uh, <laughs> uh, negative thoughts right yeah yeah okay so let's try a few intervals let's try okay so together inhale for four counts one two three four hold one two three four exhale one two three four Hold for one, two, three, four. Inhale. One, two, three, four. Hold. One, two, three, four. Exhale. One, two, three, four. Hold for one, two, three, and four. So that's one kind of um, breathing exercise. The I have to one, share. I have to share, Alvin. I I know it was only like 16 seconds but yeah i i already could start feeling a little bit more relaxed yeah okay that's very interesting uh, just a very simple box breathing exercise i could already start feeling you know of course we have our work stress and other stresses but i could already start feeling much more relaxed just by that simple exercise so yeah, thank you for that yeah the, the effect of anxiety and with uh, with stress uh in our bodies is commonly it's it's it const it constricts our breathing, so we do shallow breaths, uh, uh, mm. more frequent but more shallow breaths, and that actually puts us puts our mind and our body in 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 more stress. So doing the box breathing more or less resets the way you breathe, and again that in, that has its influence in what we think and what we feel. Okay, okay. so okay. that's one thing that you could do. Um, another thing. This is something that uh, you can do at the start of the class, the man. Um, again, self-awareness is uh, something that can be modeled uh, and something that can be taught. And for people who are not self-aware, uh, one of the things that we uh, fail to be aware of is uh, the blessings and the good things that are happening around us and the good things that are in us, right? especially during this time of the pandemic. It's so easy to um you know you have the news you hear all the bad things that are happening the illnesses and the lives lost because of the pandemic um the restrictions and the things that we are not able to do it's so easy to notice those things eh? but the reality of the situation is there are even even if just a few things there are the good things that are still happening um so with that i'm going to share two things that can do uh to encourage an awareness of the good things that uh, that is in your outer world and your in your inner world, one of the exercises that you can do in class is what we call an appreciation circle. 
this will take around uh, five to ten appreciation minutes. Appreciation circle, uh, an appreciation circle. Okay. Yes. Um, siguro if we are doing a face-to-face -face class, what you can do is have your students uh, sit or study the circle, and then you will okay. identify one person, and everybody in the group will have to say one nice thing about that person. Mm, so, okay, okay. So feeling, um, noticing the good thing. For the other students who are not uh, being appreciated, uh, it's modeling that that uh, task of, okay, I need to find something good about this person or this situation. But for the person who's being appreciated, um, he becomes he or she becomes aware that, oh, yeah, I, I do that. Or, yeah, I, I'm like that. And perhaps mm. that thing is not noticed because of the unfortunate things that that person has, has to go through. So what you can do is probably, okay, for today we are going to appreciate, let's say, Kavita. Um, and then uh, the first person would say, uh, you know, I really appreciate how you are thoughtful and how you share your lunch. Um, another kid would go, uh, hey, I, do, I know you forgot about this, but two years ago, uh, I left my shirt and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't participate in this activity and you shared your extra shirt with me and I was able to join. And can you just imagine being that person who's being appreciated? All of a sudden, it's like your birthday. Everybody um, says something nice about you. And it's mm. actually helpful also for the other kids because um, it's so easy to be negative sometimes. And um, it has an unconscious effect eh, um, if you're able to see the good things, which I would like to segue to the second activity. And this is something that you could uh, prompt your students to do. And this is something that they can do on their own time, which is journaling. Uh, I know Journaling. Has... Okay. Yeah, I think somebody posted in the comments of writing a diary or something like that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, it has fallen out of favor, I think, for most kids nowadays. Uh, personally, I'm, I'm old. <laughs> and uh, this is something that uh, somehow I, I did on my own without my teachers having to prompt me. And the way that I do journaling and the way I encourage my kids now as a counselor to do journaling is you write down three things that are good for today, that, that went well, that were that were pleasing for today. And three good past, things about today. Three good things yes. about today. Yeah, okay. Yes, three good things. But you are not allowed to repeat it for the rest of the week. So at first, ah, it's like... Okay, yeah. okay. They, they write... I like my breakfast. Uh, mom cooked hot dog, and it's my favorite. And the following day, that the mom cooked hot dog again. He can't write that down. Cannot write to... that. <laughs> cannot. <laughs> um, and it, it's a, it's a task. It's a chore at the beginning. But what makes uh, what uh, the effect that I see it has on my students is that they become more positive and optimistic by default. So I would mm. hear student who who used to be so negative and who who's so critical with his classmates i would hear after doing this exercise for like a few months he would say uh sir i'm late today but that's okay i got to watch my favorite movie while i was in the car so they they suddenly the finding the good thing suddenly becomes automatic for them and this is actually something that is very helpful uh when i was working with kids with depression with uh, hmm. of self harm and with suicide ideation, this is something that's that's really helpful. You know, to to be able to um, cast your gaze and draw your attention towards what is good. So yeah, that's fantastic, Alvin. I just want to just go through some of the comments we're seeing. And so some of them are trying the breathing exercise. I think see Mr. Fernando, he does mantras and meditates ten minutes per day. That's fantastic. And then some of them were actually using the box breathing. And I think Mr. Marcos felt relaxed, okay? So I think they're feeling relaxed just doing the exercise. And um, there's some other comments here. In fact, uh, how we can uh, do the appreciation circle, not just with our students, but with our colleagues. That's okay? So very some, good. Some, yeah. yeah. Actually, um, in my last workplace, uh, we did that, and I, I believe some of them are uh, are uh, in this session right now. So, hi guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm nervous, but anyway, that you're here. But uh, let me share about one of the things that we used to do. So, before we start our weekly meetings, 
we would do that. We would um do the appreciation circle and we would share about uh, a, a small favor or something, sometimes something funny that that person did and it lightens the mood of the meeting. Mm. Uh, this is something that you would do uh, during your meetings and um, when you meet, uh, of course, it would be odd if you're meeting for a, a person for the first time. Maybe you're uh, people in your department, people in your um, subject area, when you do meetings, you can do this. And if it is helpful with our students, it's definitely helpful in improving one's mood also and, and even improving the relationship your relationship with your colleagues yeah so the appreciation circle and then of course the journaling but no repeat <laughs> journaling after positive week, yeah after a week yeah. after one week no repeating of the journaling of positive yeah. things it can also help the students you know i like your example na reklamo lang siya ng reklamo but then he started realizing Okay, there's something good pala about it. I mean, you know, uh, one, one, one short sharing also. Uh, a modification of the journaling activity to make it more communal and more public is that um, there's this uh, pl uh, uh, website called Padlet. Uh, Padlet, yeah. So some of our teachers, in fact, us in Acad Asia, we use Padlet a lot. So Yeah, yeah what, we, what I would do sometimes in my class is I would share a Padlet link and then there's a there's a guiding questions and it becomes like a community wall for the week. Parang, what are yeah. you thankful for today? Or uh, uh, say something, ano, what something daring you did for today. And then they share their blessing or the, the good things that, that that they thought of or that they experienced for the week. And um, if doing it, if journaling is beneficial uh, by itself already, doing this as a community or as a group, it, it, multiplies the benefits tenfold there's something blessing and there's something um uplifting seeing a person's another person struggle perhaps in his early posts in that in that padlet wall and then later on there would be a resolution to the struggle or to whatever that person was probably praying for or working hard uh for and then yeah we we benefit from each other's insights and each other's blessings as well yeah, that's great, Alvin. In fact, I want to share that, uh, you know, in FreeJu in the Akadasia community, so all the FreeJu users, we all, Padlet is already built into the course builder. So they can actually insert the Padlet. And if I may, I just want to share uh, something uh, uh, about uh, one of these uh, things that we share. Let me see if I can share a different window. Uh, I'll share as exactly what you're saying. And I hope she's watching if I am able to share it. Let me see here. Um, okay. Oh, no, I'll just share a tab. This one. Okay, I'll share this. And then I'll ask Mai. She's in our she's in our backstage. If she can if you can see my so here. Okay. So actually, I don't know, uh, guys, if you know that it was uh, Kirsten's birthday just the other day. So what we did in the office is we just put up a nice padlet for her, uh, just wishing her a happy birthday. And some of us posted her old photos and things we liked about her. So again, it's a, a positive reinforcement, building self-awareness about you know good things about the person. And I guess using these tools, you can build this in Freeju as well. It's very interesting because it makes it very visual. Okay, so you know, just a quick sharing of how we use Padlet in the Freeju Akat Asia community right there. Okay. So, Yon. So, interesting. Okay. So, the time has really gone very fast. I think yeah. we probably can just invite some uh, some of our friends to ask questions. Um, maybe, uh, Mai, we can ask. I would like to invite, uh, if there are any other questions here. I think there's one good question here uh, in Mentimeter about students. So, I'd like to... Um, invite uh, one of my colleagues from Vietnam, uh, Mai, to please ask this question that we received um, from Mentimeter about their students. So Mai, can you please uh, join us on the screen? Hello, Mai. Oh, hello, guys. So thank you for introducing me. And it's my pleasure to join you guys today. Uh, so we received a lot of questions from the audience. So I'm on their behalf. So I said one is uh, this one, I think the most of teachers out there is really concerned about this. So the question is, 
How do you manage yourself if you feel annoyed to students who do not want to turn on the camera during the online uh, discussion? So we uh, would like to hear from you guys. Thanks. Yeah. Um, Thanks, Mike. Okay. Thanks. I, I've had that experience before. Um, I think uh, uh, this is uh, just a personal, uh, my personal take on it, but um, I would have, in the past, I would have one or two students who would really refuse to turn on the the video. Of course, we would try to encourage them, try to see if they're awake or if they've fallen asleep, call their name for a lot of times, my, kindly turn on your camera, my, my. And if the person doesn't respond, um, I remember I um, I went through the lesson. Uh, I, I I really can I couldn't sacrifice a huge chunk of the instruction time. Uh, trying to encourage that person to to turn on the video, and then later on I tried to uh, send that person a message and then ask, "Hey, can I speak with you?" Uh, at this time so I, I set a time also for for me to, because uh i i was teaching a subject uh in that uh in in that person's course but at the same time i was also his counselor so i scheduled an uh a sort of a counseling appointment with that person and then i asked her oh my what happened um were you uh did you fall asleep or um uh, were you having connection difficulties when i was asking you to turn on uh your video at this time and then that person shared with me that she is painfully shy and she's i uh, know she um uh, she's just afraid that uh she's going to get called or um and that her face will be flashed uh her huge face will be flashed at everyone's screen answering a question probably failing to answer a question so i made an agreement with her now okay um I will not call on you, and if there's a question that you would want to answer, you can do it on the chat box. But please, uh, you know, uh, as policy and as pro, uh, practice, let's turn on the video. If you do not speak or if you, if I don't call on you, your 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 video will not flash on the screen. And she understood. And then after that, I didn't have that difficulty with that particular person. Sometimes, um, I needed to. Uh, if if talking to the person doesn't uh sometimes doesn't work sometimes i needed to talk to that person's uh parents and they're able to throw out the difficulty uh that that person might be otherwise scared to to uh, share with me so i guess what i'm trying to say is uh try to get the attention of that person for that particular time but if you're not able to um influence his behavior or make him do what you want to do um don't sacrifice the rest of the class. Try to move forward. Try to work around the difficulty. And uh, on a more private uh, setting, try to find out what's wrong and how you could help that person with uh, with his or her difficulty. Because if that person doesn't have a difficulty, he would otherwise follow. He would have done what you're asking him to do. But since he refused to do so, there's something there. And uh, maybe a more private setting would be a more appropriate uh course of action to help that person so, yeah that's a great answer alvin I, I i think i also uh resonate with that sometimes if we have time maybe a one-on-one -on -one session with the student just to get them to share because it also depends on the types of students and how they express their learning or how they express themselves maybe they're not they're they're shy they don't like using cameras and video but may, maybe they're very good at writing right yes. so, so written projects so the kinds of output that we ask from our students, whatever kind of assessment or recitation or participation we ask of the students, I think it'll also help if we have varied ways of assessing, varied ways of getting inputs from students. So not always an oral recitation. Sometimes there's written projects. Sometimes there's group work. So maybe in the group work, maybe there's one of the students who's very confident in public speaking. But then you as the teacher can ask, okay, how did the others contribute to the project? Can you please yeah. share? And then they point out the confidence. And then let's say uh, the student says, oh, uh, Mai helped me because she has she was very good with the research and she made very nice slides, for example. And then, and then you can ask Mai, let's say, Mai, so your teammate said that you made such nice slides. So what 
inspired you to make um, the slides like this, right? So kind of engaging questions like that during the group presentation can help maybe the shy person maybe express themselves a little bit and they get a little bit more comfortable with sharing uh, positively in the session. So that's that's very interesting. Um, okay, so there are a couple of more questions now. Dumadami na po. Okay, there are more questions happening here now. Uh, there's one question here. Um, so yeah, maybe we'll take this, but I guess bef as we're, we're discussing that, I'm just looking at our guide questions. It might mm -hmm. be related to this. So I guess we have a LinkedIn question here. Mike, can you read the LinkedIn question coming in from the comments group? The last question that was posted there. Okay, sure. So this question is from Nilo Lapat. Uh, mm -hmm. So free choose, how do you handle students who are having difficult in an online class? Mm -hmm. That's the question. Yeah, so there... They're very, they're having difficulty. I guess they have to be more specific with mm -hmm. the kind of difficulty they're having. So I assume uh, Mr. Neil is asking about um, maybe lack of participation. Maybe they can't follow the lesson. Um, so how do we become more self-aware of that situation? And how, how can we help? And this is related to the guide question that we had earlier is how can the school or the home support one another in promoting self-awareness among the students right so so the student has to be more aware about i'm having a hard time with online instruction right i'm having a hard time but then you know how do you kind of get the student to persist how so how can the school and how can the home help the student uh you know uh, sir there are two things that comes to mind the first one um while the question was being asked this uh quote uh, just flashed in my mind. There's this saying that it takes a village to raise a child. And I think that very much applies to um, instruction and to, to us helping children. Uh, home and school collaboration is very important. I mean, pre-pandemic, back, back when we were doing things traditionally, it's very important. All the more now that uh, there are uh, uncalled for challenges in, in terms of instruction, in terms of learning, um, if a, it would be very helpful and very important if the teachers, the school team is in touch with the parents and the, the, the adults, the guardians that the kid have at home. Um, if we have this kind of close communication, then we can discuss the difficulties that they have. How's your internet connection? Uh, how is the area where the student is studying? Th these are the questions that I get uh, as a counselor uh, at the onset of the pandemic. Na they would ask, parang, sir, we don't have a dedicated study room for the kid. Sometimes uh, we, he, he has to uh, listen to class while on uh, while sitting on his bed and he would fall asleep. Or sometimes he would uh, he would uh, study in the uh, in the dinner dining table and we we work around uh we can uh tailor fit our uh plan of action when we have that communication at uh with home and with with the school so i would tell the parents okay under no circumstances should the kid study on his or her bed that should be devoted to sleeping uh if you study on your bed then you will have sleeping problems or you would be falling asleep during class because you're you're confusing your body if it it's study time or it's sleep time. Uh, otherwise, if you want to study in the dining table, that's okay. But have ideally have a dedicated place for study. So there's this one particular spot in the table where you're going to study. Or if you're going to study in the living room, then there's this corner. Uh, even though it's not really devoted for study, but somehow it unconsciously trains our body that, okay, I'm sitting in this corner where I usually study. Today is study time. I will not fall asleep. I will. Uh, you're telling your body to unconsciously work harder towards studying. So there. Um, what else? Um, you know, there's a lot of difficulty, kasi, with online classes. Eh, sometimes yeah. it's connectivity. Sometimes it's yon. Uh, the home setup also. So I guess. Um, you're right, sir. It's it's really an eh. Uh, it's. Communication between the home and the school is important because that's the only time that we could really tailor fit. Uh, uh, there's no generic solution to 
to problems with online classes and with online learning. And it's important for the teachers to be able to talk to the parents and see what works for that one particular kid. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting because um, even now, as some of the schools are opening up again, so hmm. some of them are doing partial face-to-face -face or full face-to-face, -face, but then even then, it's like 50% only or a third of the students go to the campus, let's say, um, for two weeks, and then the other two weeks, they learn from home. So another way would be if they have problems with the online instruction, you can still do, use some modular activities. So yeah. printed materials that they pick up from the school, they take home. But then working with the parents at home and where they are, there has to be a dedicated space and time for mm -hmm. studying, right? Mm -hmm. So even if, let's say, you try to build that um, uh, study habits, good study habits, not just online, but even offline mm -hmm. modular good mm -hmm. study habits in general. So meaning if it's the dining table, this portion at this time, let's say from 5 to 7 p.m., this is my time. No mm -hmm. one in the family is allowed to disturb my. Yes. She yes. is going to use this part of the table for her and that's it. So I think Absolutely. that even that kind of having that self-awareness that each person will get enough mm -hmm. time to do what they mm -hmm. need to do during the day that's a big yeah. that's a big uh, structure very simple to do but very big thing mm -hmm. that they can encourage good study habits yeah and if i may add sir no this is uh this is more for the teachers the man and uh, uh the, in the difficulties that may, they may encounter with online classes it helps to have options um mm -hmm. let's say for example you have this particular lesson uh that you would want uh that that you have to deliver uh, it would be nice to have uh, different ways of presenting the lesson. Will I have? Will I play a game using Kahoot, uh, or are we going to use this particular? Are we going to watch a video, or are we um, reading this section of the book? It's it's good to have these options so that if one doesn't work, let's say for example you have a game planned for that day, but for some reason the the website went down or connectivity is bad for the teacher or for the students, then you have Plan B. Okay. Let's not do the Kahoot. Let's do this instead. And um, sometimes also, if we have students who are not able to connect um, to our classes, having options also uh, would allow us to tell that person, okay, this is what we discussed. Uh, it's unfortunate that you were not able to join the class, but you can watch this video from YouTube instead, and you could read this. Uh, I, I'm emailing you this PDF of the lesson. Uh, you Having options allows us to circumvent the difficulties that we may experience because of online classes. Right. Having a plan B, right? So that's what yes. we also encourage in our trainings for mm -hmm. our teachers, you know. So you have online, but you also have physical. Use mm -hmm. all the tools available. And I think I think Mr. Fernando uh, was posting in one of the chats. I think she he posted a link to some handouts and activities. Sir Fernando, please put a pin on that. I want you to share that on the freeju platform okay to share yes. later i'll show you where you can post this so that everybody can see so thank you for sharing that mr fernando so i guess my thanks so much for joining the discussion mm -hmm. um the time is really uh, passing us so fast but i guess as we're trying to wrap up this um concept on self-awareness maybe alvin mm -hmm. i can invite you to probably share some final thoughts um trying mm -hmm. to kind of wrap up and trying to summarize uh, the topic on um, on self awareness, not just for ourselves as educators mm -hmm. and teachers, but even uh, for our students. Okay, just kind of put a ribbon on it. Uh, what can they take yeah. away from this uh, uh, self awareness session? Yeah, um, as I mentioned earlier during our discussion, that most of us are are running on autopilot for most uh, most of the time. Uh, we have our list of tasks that we need to accomplish within the day the way we have the things that needed to be done but you know uh having self-awareness is really having that time in the day uh where you could just step back and really look at yourself and look look at your surrounding and try to ask yourself am i doing what i'm supposed to be doing uh and am i is this thing that i am doing right now or is this place where i find myself right now giving me uh bring joy unto my life so uh, it's it's so having self awareness really is uh, helpful, um, you know, direct our our course of action, direct our path, um, and it's you know being an being educators, it's 
doubly and triply more important because we're not just directing our lives, we're also influencing and forming um, another person's life, a set of kids uh, looks, uh, look, look to us and uh, look to us for inspiration, for, for instruction. And uh, it's nice to have self-awareness. It's nice to be able to share this with our kids, uh, with our students as well. So yeah, I encourage you to um, have that time to step back and really look at look at yourself and look at the world around you and and try to appreciate what what you are doing and what uh, at the place that you find yourself at that particular moment. Right, absolutely. So I'll agree with the. Thanks so much for that, Alvin. I also agree with the Mr. Fernando saying that self awareness is an endless process. Yes. We'll probably try to do our box breathing and our appreciation circle mm -hmm. and our journaling uh, to also ha help us keep that habit of self-awareness. And hopefully that translates to good study habits for our students as well. And um, I'd like to take this opportunity as well to invite all our uh, viewers to partic uh, and participants here today. There is an e-certificate that uh, accompanies this webinar. To avail of that, you just sign on to Freeju, and I'll share my screen right now. I'll add it to the stream. Okay, so if you go to freeju.com, this is the ACAD Asia community platform where we invite all teachers to join, to learn, and collaborate. So if you have not yet made an account, so come here to Freeju and sign up if you haven't. Just make sure when you're filling up the form, just make sure you choose your profession as teacher, okay, so that we know that you're a teacher. We can enroll your students here later, but for now, it's really more a teacher upskilling and teacher professional development platform. And then when you sign in, you can first arrive here. Let's say we have different features here, collab ed, skilled ed, design ed, marketed. So here you have a lot of features here. I'm just using one of our test accounts. You can look at your profile. And here, Mr. Fernando is sharing a link about, let's say, um, self-awareness activities. Uh, Mr. Fernando, I want to invite you to join Freeju here and then post it here in our collab ed section. Okay, so as teachers here, we have some uh, topics here, 20 examples of digital citizenship. We have, of course, our, uh, our webinar for today that we've shared and you can share that as well. We even have eight, great, eight ways to grow your students' vocabulary. So mm -hmm. if Mr. Fernando can come here and post his uh, ideas on self-awareness, we'd be more than happy. And we can have discussion groups, okay, amongst ourselves about it. So here, if we look at the groups function, um, there are lots of chat groups on different topics about this. Um, okay, and while that's loading, what I can do is from this side, you can go to skill ed and then search for the improving self-awareness course. Okay, our, our, uh, we're posting also the link to this course. So once you get into Freeju, go into self-awareness. Obviously, I've already enrolled here. So you can continue. And then when you continue, this is what the course will look like here. So just complete the entire course. Go through all the sections content here. So on average, maybe about, yeah, I think you can do uh, faster than the designated time. And then during the conclusion, there's some activities here and some assessments. Very easy to do. Okay, just a bunch of topics on all about improving our self-awareness. Once you've completed all these topics, at the very end of the course, and you complete the reflection assignment, you will get an email that will directly send you the digital certificate of completing the entire course. And that's how you get your e-certificate. And then if you want to chat more, let's say Mr. Fernando had some more discussions about this. So again, I'm using just one of the free accounts. Just put your uh, photos later. So we have different groups, okay, to do discussions about different things. So here's set, improving self-awareness. This is a discussion group. You can have chat discussions here. We have our also our some of our topics from, let's say, Neon Polytechnic, Cultural Intelligence, another course you can take, Entrepreneurship, Continuing Professional Development, Change Management, uh, and many others. Okay, so I'd just like to invite everybody to join uh, Freeju, sign up for the course, and then when you complete the course, then you'll be able to uh, get your e-certificate. Okay, so don't forget, please enroll in the Improving Self-Awareness course, complete it, and you will get your e-certificate for this webinar. Okay, so there, um, fantastic session. Again, uh, the time was amazing. Mm -hmm. Alvin, thank you so much. Mai, thank you. It, it's uh, 
It's her first time to be sharing on the screen, so I'm so happy we have our friends from Vietnam joining us. Um, next week, don't forget to catch us uh, again every Wednesday, webinar Wednesdays. The, the registration link is up on the screen now. Uh, the topic for next week is practical approaches for maintaining a work-life balance. Okay, so I think it's a great topic, practical approaches for maintaining a work-life balance. There's also an accompanying course with certificate for that next week. So I look forward to seeing everybody next week. Thanks again, my Alvin. Uh, sayonara, paalam. Thank you so much. Uh, great session today, everybody. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Hi. I am Jenny and welcome to FreeJU, the global community of educators. Let me show you why as an educator you should make FreeJU an important part of your teaching and learning practice. A community of teaching practice is important for any educator. On FreeJU you will be able to access CollabEd, which is like LinkedIn but for educators. Here you will be able to connect and network with other educators from all around the world. You can build your own community of teaching practice and or join one of the many other existing groups and learn and share ideas, lesson plans, etc. with each other. Then, for a more formalized approach to professional development, you can go to SkillEd, which is like Netflix for educators. Here, you will be able to access a wide range of courses designed by global experts that will help you to learn about new pedagogical, technical, and soft skills, all related to 21st century education and the future of work. There are more than 20 courses available for free and for more advanced level courses. You can upgrade to the Silver Membership Plan for just 20 US dollars per year and get access to all courses designed by Academia. The courses are available in English and in several other Asian languages. And what's more you will receive a free verifiable and tamper-proof digital certificate for each course that you complete. If you have upgraded your membership to the Silver, Gold, or Platinum plans, you also get access to DesignEd, which is like Canva for educators. Here you will find the easiest and fastest way to practice your own instructional design skills and build your own courses. We have pre-integrated several third-party edtech apps like Flipgrid, Canva, Mentimeter, Padlet, H5P, Zoom, etc. right into FreeJU so you can make your courses engaging and fun for your own learners. As you can see, there is a lot you can do on FreeJU as an educator. So what are you waiting for? Go to www.freeju.com and get your very own free lifetime membership today. See you soon on FreeJU.